Hey everybody, welcome to the Ballet Rising video cast. Today I'm extremely honored to be speaking to arguably one of the greatest dancers to ever live. He influenced not only myself, but just about everybody I know. Uh, his dancing was just so spectacular and he was, he's literally a, a living legend. Um, he was the youngest person to ever become a principal dancer with American Ballet Theatre, joining as a principal at age 19. He's danced with every major choreographer you can think of. Uh, he's danced with every major principal ballerina of his generation. He's danced with every major ballet company in the entire world. Um, yeah, there's really no way to really introduce him except to say that it, he was absolutely breathtaking and I had the the honor and privilege of seeing him as a young dancer joining at American Ballet Theatre as, as an apprentice and watching him perform on a nightly basis was just a real pleasure and, and, it, and it drove me forward in my own career so much. He's an incredibly nice person, very humble and down to earth and just incredibly intelligent. And having been such an amazing star for all of his life, he's so ready, willing, and able to just give back to this art form and to people everything he can to help others achieve what he did. Um, I am really excited and honored to have here today with us Julio Boca. Let's welcome him to the show. And great, here we are. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the legend, Mr. Julio Boca. Thank you so much for being here. No, a pleasure, a pleasure to, to be here and talk to you. <laughs> yeah, great, thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to start out really quickly by saying that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most incredibly special moments in my entire life was when I joined American Ballet Theater as a young kid and uh, I had this absolutely spectacular moment where I walked into ABT and it, you know, it was, it was really exciting and it was fun, but I, I didn't really hit me that I was um, a dancing with my childhood dream company until I turned the corner and looked into the studio and I saw you and Alessandra Ferry rehearsing Romeo and Juliet and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, wow, I'm here and these, I'm dancing with these absolute <laughs> legends. It was a, a really amazing moment. Um, but yeah, uh, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit, see, see how are you doing. So now you're in Uruguay, right? Yes, I'm here in Uruguay. I've been living here since uh, 2008, uh -huh. when I, after my retirement in Buenos Aires, uh, of dancing, uh, I went here to Uruguay to live. Uh -huh. uh, it's a beautiful small country, only three and a half million people. Um, very small, very educated. Uh, so I like that, you know, uh, I have a little house, uh, very close to the beach and, you know, very calm. I can walk to the, to the supermarket, go, you know, shopping, walk in the street. And of course, everybody say hello, but from far away. Mm -hmm. And that's very nice. <laughs> so I moved to here and then, uh, since uh, 2008, I live here and I'm very happy. I'm really very happy. It's also very close to, to Argentina, just across yeah. the river, uh, only 20 minutes flying or two hours in a, uh, a ferry. Okay. Uh, so I have, still have the connection with mm -hmm. Argentina, but uh, I really enjoy to be, to be here in Uruguay. Nice, a little bit different than Manhattan, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I love Manhattan. I love New York. Uh, I mean, when I moved there in uh, 1986, uh -huh. uh, I was 19 years old when I joined the company. Uh, so in that moment for me, uh, I was really scared about everything. Yeah. And uh, so I, I was not really enjoyed to be in Manhattan. Of course, I was in ABT all day long. so. <laughs> only well, took the subway to go home and back that's it uh, uh, so uh, I was not really you know on the street all the time so but uh, in that moment I couldn't 
find a way, you know, to understand. And plus, in that moment, I was not speak any English. Mm. And uh, so it was very hard in the beginning. Mm. Uh, until little by little, you know, you start getting to see things, to understand and everything. And, and I love it. I mean, it's a beautiful, you know, even, you know, you are around a lot of people and everything, you feel free and comfortable. Yeah. You know, th there's not many big cities they have that feeling, at least for me. Mm. Uh, you know, th that feeling that uh, you're at home, you can walk, you're free, yes, you know, you get everywhere very quick, you have everything there. Yeah. As a culture, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if I go to Buenos Aires, it's a big city too, but it's too complicated. And uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> It's not easy to walk. It's not easy to go somewhere, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I always make that different. So, but I love New York and I love here. And of course, it's different because here I don't have no one around me now. Yeah. <laughs> Where I live, it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and uh, and it's, I love that. I love yeah. that. And, uh, you know, we've been there. We've been in all these big parties and crazy things. <laughs> After, as some age you need to yeah, <laughs> come <more>. down and <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes well, great. so that's uh, what i'm doing now anyway yeah. i'm you know I'm still working as a teacher and coach but uh, and i have the chance to to uh, to direct the company here yeah, yeah. Uh, for seven years mm. uh so you know Nice. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> Let, let's go back a little bit more because I want to explain to people, just for those of people who don't know, um, you know, because for me, you're, you were, you're one of the greatest dancers to ever live. You know, when I was a kid, it was like watching videotapes of either you or Baryshnikov. It was like the two of you were, were the only thing I ever watched. <laughs> so, I mean, you were, you were one of the, you won the Moscow competition, ballet, international ballet competition. And what year was that? That was uh, 1985. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so I can start, you know, like going like, okay, back. Yeah. I start when I was four. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I'm coming from Argentina. Uh, now the capital of Buenos Aires, you know, the town. And um, my mother was a teacher. My family loved arts. My grandfather was from Italy, uh, so he brought all that Italy have about culture. Uh, so, and, and the family was, you know, uh, everything there. Uh, my mother was teacher of piano, violin, uh, music, uh, classical ballet, tango, folk, dance. I mean, everything. It was not TV in that time, so oh. <laughs> it was different. <laughs> and. Uh, so I enjoy, I always wanted to be a dancer. I asked my mother when I was seven that I want to be a dancer. So uh, she took me to the National Ballet School. I did the National Ballet School. Mm. Uh, also, I did the Teatro Colón Ballet School. So I was doing, uh, going very early in the morning, traveling for an hour and a half from home, like the train, the bus, and then uh, do the morning, the National Ballet School, and the afternoon, the regular school. I don't know how you call that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the evening, the Teatro Colón uh, school, wow. and then back to 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 home. Uh, an hour, an hour and a half back, and then the next morning again the same thing. Uh, so after that, I was 14 years old, and I have the chance to go to to have my first contract. Mm -hmm. I was hired as a corps de ballet in Venezuela, in Caracas, with the Teresa Carreño. Uh -huh. Uh, so I, I was there for from 14 to 15 years old. Uh, that was 1982, 83. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I, I lived there for a year and that age alone, but I already have my contract as a Code de Ballet doing some solist. Uh -huh. And then I went to, they invite me to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, Teatro Municipal as a guest oh, when I was 15. And I did my first principal role. Uh, there was La Fille Malgarde wow. from Ashton. Mm -hmm. and, and since then, I was guesting in Venezuela, Brazil, and the Teatro Colón. I worked with Fleming Flynn. I did the Burnham Bill, uh, di different roles. And 
And then I decided to go to this competition in Osaka, mm -hmm. Japan. Uh, because in that moment, competition was different. Uh, in this place, they pay for everything. So they pay for the fly, hotel, everything. <laughs> that, <laughs> nothing happened anymore. <laughs> no. so, I, so I say to myself, okay, how, how many times I have this chance to go to Japan <laughs> for free, yeah. do what I want, dance. So I went there and then the second round, they say goodbye, oh, out. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I was already have my job. I was already have my contract in the Teatro Colón. So, and so that was the ending of uh, 17 years old, going to 18. And then I went back and then suddenly there came this uh, opportunity to go to Moscow. Mm -hmm. and, and then and the first thing I say, I don't want to go to back to there, you know, I went to Osaka, they say no, so I'm not that good, you know, mm. for the rest of the world. I know in Latin America, I'm good, but not for the rest of the world. And then I went, you know, thinking, and then they asked me again, why well, you don't go there, you know? And I went like, okay, this time I, I don't want to compete. I just go to dance to represent my country. And at least for once, at least in the first round, I dance in the ball show. <laughs> Yeah. You know, just to just to know that that stage, the, the history of it. Yeah. Uh, so I went there. So I went to the competition, and Moscow was different. You pay the going there, mm -hmm. and the competition pay you the going back. So mm -hmm. it was half of the flight. So it was not bad either. Right. Uh, so I arrived there and. Uh, Start doing my first run, I did Don Q, second run, Corsair and a tango piece contemporary. Mm -hmm. And then the third round, uh, we prepare Nutcracker. But of course, uh, in that time, uh, when we were rehearsing, we never rehearsed Nutcracker because with my partner, Raquel Rossetti, mm -hmm. she was the principal from the Cologne, she was more experienced, she was not competing. Mm -hmm. uh, we say we're never gonna get to the third, third round. So, what we're going to rehearse that, you know, we keep the classical line, you know, the style, everything was not my style at that time. And so we arrive on the third round, <laughs> which at that time we have this, uh, uh, the music was in a tape, you know, kind of run things, you know, yeah. and it was so bad. But when you arrive on the third round, they ask you if you want to use your music, or the orchestra. Of course, we look at each other with Raquel and we say, come on, we take the, the Bolshoi orchestra doing Tchaikovsky. So, yeah. So we did that. <laughs> we really enjoyed that. And also for me, it was so special because I always loved uh, Vasiliev, Vladimir Vasiliev. Uh, he came a lot to dance in Argentina with, our, with the Teatro Colón, also with the Bolshoi, came a lot to Argentina. Uh -huh. So I saw him more, the other dances like Barishnikov or Nureyev, I saw them, but more in tape. Mm. Uh, and except for Nureyev that I saw him, my first performance that I saw was four years old, Nutcracker, he's Nutcracker in, in the Teatro Colón. Oh, wow. uh, of course, I don't remember much of him. I remember the big rat going around, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, that was my first time I saw it. But after that, I always saw it in tape. So uh, in that moment, when we rehearsed on the stage in the Bolshoi for the third round with the orchestra, we have only 15 minutes, I write Vladimir Vasiliev, you know? Mm. Your idol arrived to the stage. Yeah. Because suddenly, we were the surprise of this competition. You know, yeah. 18 years old from Argentina. You know, it was kind of... What's going on here? <laughs> uh, so Vasiliev came and helped us translate the tempo with the director. Oh, wow. He was always have a good relation with the Teatro Colón, so yeah. oh, that's so they know us, I mean, from there. So it was, so it was like in a dream, yeah. you know, Bolshoi, orchestra, your idol there helping you. <laughs> <laughs> so we danced. Uh, it was a beautiful performance, and uh, and the next day uh, we know that uh, my partner uh, win the best partner 
off a competition. She was not competing, so she win. Oh, nice. Always is a for a boy, and <laughs> this time was a girl, oh, wow. and I win the gold medal wow. together with uh, Nina and Nina Wow! In that time. So after that, uh, we went back to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and of course I was a big idol there. All the cameras, everything, full performance, a lot of shows, and everything. My mind changed also because suddenly everybody know me on the street. Yeah, the wow. people who, you know, the people who drive the clean uh, truck, uh -huh. you know, to clean the street, know me. Everybody. You know, I couldn't walk on the street and it was nice, but in the same moment it was so crazy. Yeah. So uh, I continued work there and the ending of that year, uh, I had my first uh, problem with my knee. Uh, I broke a little bit of the menisque on my left knee. Yeah. So anyway, I continue and then I, I was guesting with the Ballet Arts of Montreal. Mm -hmm. uh, going guesting the next year to the Bolshoi, Marinsky, uh, Vilnius, Novosibir, Siberia, Turin, and all that. And going back, again, my knee was very uh, uh, swollen and bad. Yeah. So, uh, and that time was no uh, uh, MRI machines, so they inject you uh, a liquid. Yeah. So the knee can swollen and they can look inside. Oh. But the knee in that time was not clean, was dirty. Oh, wow. So they have, uh, they, I have an uh, infection in my whole knee, an articulation infection. Mm. Uh, so the operation it was supposed to be two weeks. It took me like two months to recover. Nice. And in that time, I will continue talking, it's okay to tell the story until I get to ABT. Okay, yeah. so at yeah. that time, <laughs> we, we received a, a call for a friend from Barishnikov that he wanted me to meet me in person. He saw the videotape, someone gave the videotape of my competition in Moscow and he wanted me to see me in person. So uh, they called me if I can go in two weeks to New York. So in that moment I was, in bed, try to recover from my knee surgery. So I went like say, well, you know, in this moment, I have so many shows, so many that I cannot go in this time. If it can be in one month and a half, I will be there. I say, okay, of course, of course. You know, if I was telling him that I have a knee surgery, he said, oh, thank you. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> who's gonna hire you when you already have your first knee surgery? Nobody. Yeah, so. This, that moment for me was uh, very good because it was in a moment that I was in my mind, like, I, I, I can go back, uh, you know, it will be, I will be good again to go back, you know, my knee will, you know, everything was in my head. So that gave me a lot of energy. So I called my private teacher, Gloria Casta, uh -huh. uh, who also prepared me to go to Moscow. And, and I started doing class, morning and afternoon, morning and afternoon, along with her. So little by little, my confidence came back, you know, and everything. And uh, so I took the flight to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Howard Gilman, I don't know if you remember Howard Gilman. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the messengers of uh, a sponsor from ABT. Uh -huh. uh, so he paid all the flight. Uh, for the, my manager and myself. Mm -hmm. So we went, it was not a straight flight from Argentina at that time. We have to stop in Rio and then, so I arrived in New York, going up of, of the terminal. Uh -huh. And there it was Howard Gilman and Natalie Moody, uh, his secretary who speaks Spanish. Uh -huh. So they took me to this limousine. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I went to the, uh, one of his uh, penthouse to take a shower and then from there to ABT Studios. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so all the same day, fly, arrive, shower, limousine, ABT, A90 Broadway, waiting there and then open the door, Varishniko, say hi to Howard, Natalie, they present myself and say, okay, go to change and go to class. <laughs> so, 
Just coming from my surgery. Yeah. No in Yeah. 19 years old. Arrived in New York. All that his, his story. And then class. And studio number two. Uh, Gladys was on the piano. Oh, Gladys. Jorgen Schneider, who was the teacher in that moment, and Misha's teacher. Mm -hmm. Misha and myself in the bar doing class. Wow. Face to face, like this, with Barishnikov. <laughs> doing plie, tandu, everything. I was like, you know, I, I never did a class like that. I, I, you know, just everything working, sweat, and, you know, and nervous you know misha was there you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so okay. we finished the bar we finished the bar and then we went to the center but in that time we moved the the center i don't know why and and actually i never asked him i have to ask him mm -hmm. uh we went we moved to the studio five to the center so we started doing center and suddenly all the members of the company start getting into the studio they have rehearsed uh, so suddenly it was Kevin, Rosa Stratton, Patrick Bissell, Mariana Cherkasky, uh, Cynthia Harvey, Martin Van Hamel. I mean, you know, wow. Danilo Rodovich, uh, Johan Remba, Gilbog, um, yeah. the whole ABT there. And I was like, you know, doing, but uh, until I'm, I'm sure he saw my face like I was dead, I, like I can't continue anymore, you know. And so he said, go to change and see you in the office. So I went to change and my head was, this is terrible. This is not going to work. This is nothing. And so I went to the office and he said, do you want to be an ABT? Yeah. And I went like, yes, of course. It's my dream company. And uh, he said, okay, so tomorrow uh, come to sign the contract. And in that time, my mind was, God, I'm going to be in the court of the Valley of IBT. I have my job, my dream come true, you know, just. And then he said, okay, come tomorrow. And we sign the contract as a principal dancer. So, <laughs> so all that, and, you know, in two days. <laughs> wow. So I was there, 19 years old, coming from Argentina. And have a contract as a principal with IBT. Yeah, wow. You know, I went back to Buenos Aires to my last performance there. Everything was a scandal there because, you know, Varishinko hired me as a principal dancer, but one of the best company in the world. Yeah. And so I went back, did all that. And then in um, November, uh, in October, uh, November, I went back there and I started working with the company. Of mm -hmm. course, when I went there, you know, I was looking at everybody and I said, I want to know what they're thinking of me. You know, suddenly this guy coming from nowhere and, <laughs> and it's principal yeah. and it's, you know, a little short, a little, you know, you know, it's not, and uh, not, not coming from any, you know, amazing school and, <laughs> yeah. and it's principal when you have people who are in the court and then the solids and then they get to principal, it's not like, you know, yeah, yeah. So I was so nervous, you know, each time I was doing class and rehearsing. I remember my first rehearsal, uh, Jelly, Sherry Yeager was um, oh, yeah. my partner, my partner in that moment when uh -huh. I began there. Uh, and we did not cracker uh, together. So the first rehearsal in the studio, I couldn't finish uh, the, the, the part that I couldn't finish. Oh, wow. I was really, because so I was uh, so tired, so nervous. Uh, you know, I have to show everybody why I'm principal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why Misha, you know, hired me. And I remember to finish was, uh, was there, like <laughs> dead on the floor. Yeah. But I mean, I have to say it, everybody was so nice. Uh, I remember they opened their arms and their heart to, you know, to take care of me. Oh, that's, and, that's uh, uh, so that was the story. That was the story to how I get arrived to. Yeah, I, no, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, it's such a it's such an honor just to be like I feel so honored to have been in American Ballet Theater. You know, but I can't imagine the pressure that you must have felt. You know, coming into the studio that way and just yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. <laughs> I mean, I, I joined ABT as an apprentice. <laughs> that was already a lot of pressure. 
<laughs> you know, it, it's uh, you know, it's it's amazing when you love some company, uh, all the feeling they happen, you know, into you and all the things going into your mind. That of course, the teachers or a culture they they don't know, mm. and 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 now maybe we have that connection a little more, you know, with dancers, students. Before was not that connection. I mean, the teacher and coach was there, they correct you and then you do it, you know. Yeah. So you never pass that, mm. especially in the beginning, of course, you know. Yeah. Later on, you know, you have a little more confidence with, you know, with the teacher and the coach, they know you, you know them. So, but, you know, it's a really different. Now, you, they need that, this, you know, connection. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's a little more easy now for them to to get into all this amazing company and to this amazing war, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, there's, at the time there's, that we went. Yeah, the, the, the world. I mean, the world is is a little bit different, but the, the ballet world has changed a lot. Just just even in the past few years, I'm my girlfriend is mm -hmm. still dancing in here at National Ballet in Amsterdam. And, you know, I'm looking at the company now and how it works and I'm just seeing and I'm like, wow, it's, it's so different than just, you know, five, ten years ago when I was there. It's like, wow, <laughs> it's changing <laughs> rapidly. But, um, but you, had, you had such a spectacular career. I was reading your CV a little bit earlier. I mean, I kind of knew it already, but I wanted to brush up on it. But you've, you've danced with every major opera house in the world. Uh, that's such an incredible accomplishment, you know, La Scala, Royal Opera House, Paris Opera, Marion's people. It's just, wow. You know, what, what do you think uh, throughout your career, what was your biggest, um, what, what was your proudest moment in your, in your career? Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very, it's very hard to, uh, to have one, you know, I always say it, I work very hard. It's not like I never work, but also I arrived in a moment uh, that was amazing. You know, I have that chance, you know, to work with Misha. Uh, suddenly, you know, opened the door in my dressing room in San Francisco after performing Giselle and Nuri was there coming to congratulate me or touring with Maya Pliseskaya or guesting with Cialicia. You know, uh, all that, a special incredible time mm. uh you know it's very hard to choose you know i have the chance to dance with noella pontois with monique ludier mm. uh bibiana durante Darcy basel cynthia gregory cynthia harvey susan jaffe nina nanashi alessandra shelly yerga mariana cherkaski ludmila semeniaka uh you so know can, alessandra of course, but I, I can go on and on yeah, we could just ask uh, which which great ballerinas of your generation did you not dance with? <laughs> well, it's very hard to say. I don't know. I think I danced with everybody. And ABT, I think I danced with every, with Julie Kemp, Paloma, and Jomara, you know. So it's very hard. And also, how you say, you know, I was, I don't know, guesting uh, with the Royal, and I did. Uh, Makarova last Romeo and Juliet full and with the Royal Ballet, you wow. know, she asked me to go there. So I was dancing with her also, and she invited me to go to Paris. And, you know, uh, so to dance in, uh, in Paris Opera or to guest, also with my company, you know, I have, uh, I built a company in 1990 for 20 wow. years, but one time we shared a one performance and the Opera Garnier, the first half was the Paris Opera and the second half was my company. You know, and you know this little thing. So I, for me, it's so amazing, different, and incredible. You know, I cannot choose one because it was so many, and so good, and so different. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's so hard for me. One of the things I always say is, I love to be on the stage. That's what is important for me. And that time, I always wanted to be dancing, no matter what, no matter where. Yeah. Just want to be on stage and dancing. That was my time there. I was so free and happy. And, you know, I enjoyed every moment. Of course, someone was good, someone was not. But yeah. just to be there, yeah. no matter what. And so I have this extra luck, not only to do what I love to do was dancing, 
also to have this chance, you know, just, I don't know, share the stage with Misha and drink to me, you know, from McMorris, you know, it's, you know, when I was young, you know, it's so uh, incredible. It's yeah. amazing. Or touring with Maya Plisesca, yeah, you know, she was directing on the national uh, uh, company in Spain. Uh -huh. uh, so she invited me to go. So I was doing team and Diana, and she was doing Dai Swan. And, but, mm -hmm. you know, touring and talking and share the, you know, publicity, you know, like, you know, amazing. Uh, <laughs> you know, dance with Ludmila Semenyaka, the partner of Barishnikov for many years, and, you know, come to the Cologne and do Swan Lay with her. And, you know, and also, uh, doing performance like, I don't know, for to help the world to be free or whatever in Rio where Placido Domingo was singing and wow. to do a tango with Liza Minelli oh, wow. and uh, I don't know, to do a musical in Broadway, yeah. you know, a uh, film, uh, film with Carlos Sauro tango. Uh, yeah, just, you, uh, you did a lot of stuff besides just ballet. You did also some films. You did uh, Fosse. You did some Broadway. Well, I mean, you 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 were I mean, one of those great dancers. Um, that I think from your generation, there was a, a a great group of dancers that really transcended our genre. You know, you guys weren't just great ballet dancers. You also did a lot of stuff outside the the theater and, and other art forms, which is truly spectacular. Um, that kind of all, could have died down for a little while, and then recently it sort of sort of picked up a little bit. Well, it was a moment, you know. That I was say I was getting into that beautiful area, ending, and to transform to the new kind of generation, to say mm -hmm. like that, you know, another generation like you know dancer like Manuel Legri, Jose Carreño, uh, Angel, you know, uh, different new generation. I was from there to pass to here. <laughs> uh, so it was amazing. And that was the moment, you know, when I, uh, I, I see that I have to do something different things, you know, to get, uh, uh, to continue mm -hmm. to be me. So I have not disappear <laughs> no, because no, of this new no. generation coming up, you know, that's, that's not a regular, it's just life, you know. No, yeah. uh, but also, you know, how you said in the beginning that you saw Alex and me in the re rehearsal room and Judith to find that special partner, yeah. you know, like I find Nina and Anashuri to do all this big role, Swan Lake, Corsair, Donk, you know, all that energy going on. And then to find this beautiful, fragile and incredible strong, like Alessandra Ferry, yeah. that we have that connection that yeah. uh, for me, I don't have it with anybody else mm. you know uh also was special in the in my career nobody not so many dancers have that connection they, they are very, maybe they're good dancing together but the extra where people love to see us you know yeah. the, together all the time is something magical happen yeah. it happened with her and for good her feel the same way so uh you know i always say I think one of the things uh, we continue to be and to have that mystery on our uh, relationship mm. was because we never went to bed together. <laughs> you know, <laughs> each, each one have their own life separate. We love each other, you know, we're so close, so together, but we never pass that. There's mm. some time when you pass that, the, the whole mystery disappear that can complicate you know, because <laughs> yeah but also you know that that thing when you perform you have that feeling that you you want to go more yeah but you never so that more we never know really what is oh, yeah. in it you yeah. know so we have that extra thing that's what i saw and that's what i feel you know mm we have that chance to go to bed that we did you know we we have that chance it's not like we never have because we have loved each other uh we still love each other but you yeah. know if we did that i feel like it, that's magic was so limited yeah 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 
And with Alex, you know, it's, it was amazing. Uh, the, we understand each other, we respect each other, we trust each other. And that is so important when you're done with someone, yeah. you know? Uh, I never have problem with nobody. And I know all the women want to dance with me because mm -hmm. I, I know that I always was there for them. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my first thing, just be there no matter what. You can fail, but not her. <laughs> yeah, you are, you are a great, I mean, uh, everyone, everyone remembers you as this phenomenal dancer, you know, great jumps, great technique. But you were also an incredible partner as well. I mean, I, I, I saw you dance many, many times when I was in ABT and it was, yeah, it was just, you know, the way the, way the women trust you, the, the, the sort of the effortless movement that, that I saw those women make, you know, and it was just sort of like they had full confidence in you and you were, yeah, it was, it was really spectacular. I mean, such a great artist, technician and, and partner. I mean, it was just such a complete package. It was, uh, yeah, for me. Okay, I'm getting red now. <laughs> I mean, just for me as a, as a young dancer, I was just watching it like, wow, I want to I wanna be like that. <laughs> it was really exciting. But, um, but yeah. No, but you know, when you're, it's like, when now, I, you know, now sometimes I'm talking to schools, uh, students, and I always say, uh, you know, boys, if you are a very good partner, all the women will love to dance with you and you will have more performance. <laughs> yeah, true. you know so you always have to be careful with her of course each one will be different the balance is different but you have to know how to manage that so mm -hmm. when uh, you partner someone and that person trusts you you will enjoy so much and the performer will be so easy and that's what i try to do with all my partner you know i respect everybody so that respect that confidence that i give to them uh, there can be free. Mm. So, uh, you know, I dance with tall, short, different kind of legs, uh, different feet. You know, it's not like I dance with the same style every, every time. So, and, and I enjoy that. I enjoy to, to change because for me it was, uh, how you call it, this, um, oh God, it will come. Uh, uh, not an adventure, but, uh, you know, when something is impossible, you tr you try to do something different, you know, get better and better, you know. Yeah, uh, I just, uh, just constantly growing, like constantly building. Yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, not, not to have a limit, yeah. not to be don't, comfortable. Don't be comfortable, always push for yeah. more. Yeah. So that's what I always tell the student, you know, no, you cannot be comfortable, comfortable, sorry, in this career. You know, that's the wrong thing to do. Mm. Uh, you know, you have to always push, get, try to be, you know, better and uh, be uh, curious all the time. You have to be curious. I think, yeah, curious you know, curious and, and risk and, and, and take risks. Yeah. You have to take risks. You know, curiosity so, is, is really important. I try to stress that a lot to my students. You know, always be curious and, you know, just, you know, look for new things. Always be looking, always be examining, always be, you know, be critical, you know, not too critical to where you're putting yeah. yourself, but be critical. Like, you know, always make sure that you're looking how it could be better, you know? So. And not copy, please. You can love watching all this internet things. Now you can go just like that. Mm. Before my time, you have to wait for the VH, VHS to get <laughs> <laughs> to South America and to see something. So you have that. So enjoy it, but don't copy. Make your own, have your own personality. Yeah. You know, that's so important. That's what audience want to see. Mm. Because technique, you know, 10, 12 periods, I did it in my time, Misha did, you know, so many did it. And now everybody's doing it, it's good. Mm. You know, you can jump, do all these tricks. But, you know, if you do that with no personality, yeah. uh, yes. you know, it's wow. good, good. Okay, next, yeah. good. next, you yeah. know. Yeah. We have to fight for that. We have to teach that to them. Mm. It's artistry. It's, it's, you know, tricks and jumps are great, but it, it comes from in here. It's, it's this. That, that it's is how, it's how, yes, it's how you do that. You know, that's the important thing. How with quality, you know, with excellence, that's how you make the difference between each dancer. Yeah, because you know, in ABT, you have in my time, you have Jose Carreño, 
and then Angel Ken with all the energy to the trick, but you know, we all can be turning and jumping and you know, but each one have our own personality. Yeah. How to do that. Yeah. You know? Good. And uh, so I think that's important also to remain remind then the students. Uh, you know, in this moment, like uh, pandemic and that we are now, we have to be at home. When I teach class or something, I always say also to them, like, you know, take this time to see you inside yourself. You know, try to to feel your body. Each time you do a movement, how you movement feel. So when you know that feeling, you don't have to go here to say, okay, you have to go up your finger, up your, just the finger will go along and you can be, you know, dancing and do another thing, you know, go more, you know, prepare the role, the character, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and also I'm very straightforward sometimes and uh, <laughs> I love it, but you know, people sometimes love it, sometimes not. Yeah. And I said also to them, try to look yourself if you really love this, because this is a very hard uh, career. It's a sacrifice. It's a beautiful sacrifice, you know, yeah. because it's a beautiful thing to do, but it's a sacrifice. So really take your time now to really see and feel if you really want to do this, mm. you know? And yeah, it's so a, that's it's an excellent moment for people to do that. That's what I've been telling a lot of people as well. You know, take this time, you know, it's, it's, it's hard because we want to be dancing. We want to be working. We want to be in the studio. We want to be pushing, but there's a lot of, a lot of things that you can learn about yourself, just searching your, your soul and who you are and how you work. And just like you said, feeling the details and the finer things it's now is a great time to do that when you can't be in the studio you know going full on yes especially when you have this you know very small place to move yeah. you need to be you know try to small things <laughs> uh, so it's it's, it's I, feel, I feel like it's the right moment mm -hmm. and also you know i feel uh in south america especially dancer they were more together than ever before mm -hmm. uh you know because of this the connections between everybody every company uh it's amazing it's great yeah. uh, you know uh, like uh, maybe in the, around the world and united and europe you know australia they do all this co-production all the time they are getting they've been there this connection mm -hmm. here in south america was not oh. ever yeah, you know, I try with the company try to do things, and the ending, we managed just to switch set and costume, you know. Yeah, but yeah. my idea was no. They say, okay, we do this big production. Let's say, okay, I don't know, a new piece, new ballet, where every company does something, but we build together something. Yeah. It was impossible. <laughs> impossible. Yeah. So it's so nice to see now because of uh, all this red things they do now, uh, how they are getting together, how they manage to, to communicate and to do this video, we're all dancing together and, be, and yeah, each yeah. one in your home, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, the collaboration. So I hope. The collaboration. I, yeah. Just seeing it. I well, hope. Yeah. Yes. I always think like people are, you know, when, when you're sort of confined, this is when you really have to be creative and you have to step outside of your of your normal situation and find new ways of doing things. And I think this is a really great opportunity for people to, to sort of figure out how, how are we going to get around this situation? And, and we've seen some really spectacular things. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, it, not only for the big companies that doing all the big good dancers, everything, but also for people that never dance you see some videos and say, wow, what is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. The idea, you know, the ima imagination they have. Uh, you see in that moment, you see how everybody have an artist inside. Yeah. And that's sometimes I say, I hope political people know this. And I hope in our country, education and culture can go together, you know, like mm -hmm. a really together. The art, this makes art with the education together like yeah. a regular thing yeah. for from child to big you know i hope they can their mind they can change that yeah. because you see everybody have an artist inside yeah you know 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, yeah, it's just, it's such a, um, I, I just think like, wow, now is such an amazing time because, well, it's it's really hard because obviously we're, we're all confined, like we were talking about, we're, we're confined and we're, we're really worried about the economic fallout from everything that's happening right now. But at the same time, you know, this whole shift to, to doing everything online is now giving people opportunities to see and experience ballet and opera and, and things that they never would have been able to see or experience before. It's like we were talking earlier, you and I, when we were growing up, when we wanted to see a dancer, we had to wait for the VHS to come. And that took, I mean, decades. <laughs> now, <Yes. laughs> you know, now, you know, if you're a ballet fan and you live someplace like Sri Lanka or India, you know, now you can just get on your mobile phone and you can watch the Paris Opera, you can watch the Bolshoi, you can watch American Ballet, you can watch anybody you want. It's right there at your fingertips. So the amount I know it's amazing that people are going to get is is really amazing, and I think in the future that's really going to help us a lot. Well, I hope. I mean, this will be a complimentary thing for the real stage, yeah. uh, the yeah. real people on the theater. Mm -hmm. You know, we. I love to go back for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love to go to back to the theater to see a three D thing, not two D. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, I mean, but I hope this helps also for the company to get uh, a little more out, not to close inside, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, I remember when I, I began uh, my career in Argentina, I want for people to know ballet and to love ballet and for them to have the chance to see ballet. So I was traveling a lot from north to south, east to east, everywhere in Argentina. Mm. So everybody has the chance to see it. Right. You know, small stage, big stage, you know, kind of strange stage, <laughs> great stage, no matter what, but the people have the chance, the stadiums, you know, I dance in the stadiums, soccer stadiums, you know, but for people to feel a little more free. Yeah. I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about your, your foundation because this sounds like a, I mean, you've had it for quite a while, but it's such a, a great project. So tell, tell me a little bit about how you started it and, and what it's all about and, and uh, where you're going from here. Okay, I started the foundation like 22 years ago. Uh, it's really, I, I, I started it because I wanted to help uh, students, dancers, uh, acting people, you know, young for them to, to make the dream come true. Uh, so I start by a little. First, the foundation helped a lot the, my company. Uh, we have this special uh, place that we rent for that. And, and suddenly there came out this uh, theatrical musical school. And also with the classical and contemporary. Mm. Uh, so the idea was to help, you know, uh, young uh, students to, for them to to have the dream to who doesn't have the money to to support this um, so we start from Argentina from all over Argentina give the opportunity and then little by little we went to Latin America and so I've been helped them to you know to move on and at least to try for them if it does it's the dream they want to yeah. Uh, have the possibility to to do, and also we give a, a scholarship to Steps, uh, you know, in other places, and uh, and also we've been working in uh, different communities, uh, very poor poor communities uh, in Buenos Aires, uh, giving class also to people who have uh, this capacity, uh, motrices and. Uh, Years you know, to hear. I don't know the right word. Sorry, it's not. Um, yeah. uh, um, so, you know, try to to help the community for for them to to be the chance. And a lot of dancers, uh, uh, even around sixty percent of the students live in the the school and they have a job already. Yeah. Um, wow. And in Argentina musical comedy is very very strong uh -huh. uh, you know and theater off and everything it's very strong you you know you can go one show a different show every day during the whole year oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a big a big it's a big thing yeah. so you know 
in order went out to other companies and uh, you know so it's been uh, been a little help of course in the beginning i was working and yeah. the money that i was winning put it there when i stopped dancing that money stopped coming in so i tried to get some sponsors in um, in argentina or south america it's very hard to to people to understand how to help and it's not like very community commune 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 to a, a private person also okay. to help like in europe or united states you know yeah. uh so little by little we we try to find different way to help uh, the foundation uh -huh. this year like everybody else we have a really big big problem i've been teaching class and you know put half of the salary for the teachers so we can continue but not closing mm -hmm. uh we hope we can pass this uh so i don't have to close yeah. this uh foundation but uh we fight i mean we fight for for doing that in argentina you know south america economy is always like you know yeah. 10 years going good and then 10 years back and this is like so uh, but this time it's completely different from the other time in that we have a problem really really different yeah. but you know we i always will try to find to find different ways to into the last minute uh but it's a foundation who helped a lot uh make a lot of dreams and, and i'm very happy for all my team mm -hmm. how they work there how they make this work possible you know in this time the teacher continue by zoom teaching the students to students who can pay good who doesn't can pay good either uh you know because it's this we have to be together for this and that's what we're doing uh so that's uh the foundation that i have for I mean, them I, to make a, a dream i think come true. foundations like this are so important uh not just for the arts and, and ballet but but just in general but mm -hmm. i mean um you know I, I it's just so important to for 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 people to have opportunity but also to have exposure and 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 to to really spread the message of of dance and art and and collaboration and expression and things like that these foundations like yours are are so important to do this because i mean the big major schools can only do so much and go so far but we need people like you and and, and others that are doing similar things to go really out into the community and go away from the cities and and away from the you know the the main areas where there's money and reach out to people where where there where there's a huge desire and a passion but they don't have the, the necessary means or the funding or the access to things like that so i mean yeah there's uh, we've got yeah it's so many i think it was so many things we different way we can do and i think it also the big companies can do you know to yeah. travel to go to these places mm -hmm. you know not just for one show you know, just yeah. to go and have that connection. Yeah. You know, when I was directing the company here, I know why uh, I put back again the national tour, international, but when we did national tour, uh, I have uh, three different dancers who we arrive to that town and this dancer gone to the regular school mm. with, uh, you know, for talking to children, explain yeah. how to dance, you know, try to, have that connection so for them to be uh to to see ballet like it's something uh natural not yeah. something so far away yeah you know it can be part of our community uh so we did that in every town and i'm talking uruguay here i mean it's very small you know and some theater it's only 200 people in it <laughs> so how much in it it's how small could be the stage but we've been there and audience loved because nobody get there to that to that town because it's so small so you know artists it's very hard to get there if, if you go alone good but a company and it's a national company you're supposed to be there for them yeah because uh, we live because of them <laughs> our yeah. salary come from them from that taxes come from yeah. so we have to go back so we did that and also we've been doing um performance 
and they're still doing now, uh, performing for different school around uh, this, you know, a school where in the middle of nowhere, uh, I hear they call it rural, in uh -huh. the middle of the land, uh -huh. they have a school, maybe they got two students, uh -huh. okay? So we take all these different schools, students, and we bring it to Montevideo, to the capital. Oh, great. So they can come and see a full ballet. Oh. They saw Coppelia, they saw Giselle, they saw uh, Don Quixote, Corsair, you know. So before that, they're sending all the information. Some teacher talk to them and explain and find a way to know what a ballet is. And so when they come to the, see the show, they have an idea, you know. And it's amazing how for the first time they see this, you know, uh, the, all the, the roles coming in, they start laughing and, uh, and suddenly they go quiet and how they concentrate. Yeah. yeah. And how to learn how they finish the, the variation, they, they applause, you know, uh -huh. and nobody say anything about it. They're just learning to yeah. watch, you yeah. know, and it's amazing the connection they have. And it's amazing after that, you know, that I say all the characters go outside so they can meet uh -huh. them okay. and take a picture yeah. and uh, talk to them, and, you know. And, uh, and also the program that I was given to them, it was uh, uh, like a caricature, uh, you know, like a uh, like comic. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah. The, all the, the, the history was a comic. Oh, great. Fantastic. So, <laughs> so for them to be more familiar, and then, of course, in the end, we have all these questions about what is the stage, what is the wind, what is the light, what is the, you know, orchestra, you know, yeah. Yeah. classical things for them to know. And uh, so also, you know, try for them to make it, to uh, take them to our side, but for us to be on their side, you know, like how we can connect, yeah. you know, it's not only to show, you know, point shoes, a tutu, a cur you know, yeah. you try to make, okay, this comic thing was amazing. Even we, 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 there's show, uh, this ballet called uh, a streetcar named Desire. Oh, yeah. So we have a production, uh, of course, not the little ones, a little more higher because it's, the story is kind of, you know, very hard. But they came to watch and it was amazing, you know, and uh, the reaction of these uh, students, they are more, you know, 12, 14, yeah. and the bouts, how they were they're screaming to the, the guy, you know, or the lady, the woman screaming to the guy, you know, just things like, uh, that is so nice because that's the reaction we need, yeah. you know? So we've been doing all this, try, And I think it, if a big company, they do that, not just more, not so formal. Mm. I think they have to be, make them a little more, you know, natural. I think it, I, this is yes, I think, because, you know, the reason I started Ballet Rising is because, you know, ballet companies, everybody wants to, to promote ballet, they want to promote art, they want to promote opportunity. But, you know, the ballet, the big ballet companies, they're, they're limited in what they can do. And, you know, they go on tour sometimes to, to places, but not very often. And, and most places, they'll never get the opportunity to go. So as, as a dancer, you know, I would travel, you know, I remember when I went to India, I went to New Delhi, I was teaching some classes in New Delhi, and I wanted to reach out to people. They had seen ballet before, but they always had this sort of distant look at it, you know, and it wasn't real to them, you know. And so when I was there, I actually went around to schools to speak to people, and, and I had a big group of boys who came up to me, and they were like, you're a ballet dancer? I said, yeah. And they're like, wow, I've never met one. I was like, oh, okay, you know, so I, I just talked to them a little bit and got to know them a little bit. And it's it's that feeling that 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 it's real, you know, suddenly after meeting me, these boys felt like, okay, ballet is real. It's not just something on TV. It's some, it's a real thing. People really do it. That guy that I met is real. And so what I want to do is, you know, when a ballet company will go on tour, they go on tour and people see it and then they go, I want to pick up where they left off and I want to continue the, 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 the dialogue and the connection and see how we can really 
get into the community and, and really communicate with the people and find ways of collaboration and, and, and see what we can do as a society to understand each other and dance and, and ballet. You know, I, I just use ballet as a medium of, it, of communication, but for me, it's all just about dance and, and, and art and expression and just humans coming together and communicating and collaborating. So yeah, this is, I think it's really important that, that the ballet and dance community get more out into the into society in more societies more places and really really communicate more with people more than just you know doing what we do on stage well you know it's like so many different things you know like religion yeah. uh what they do they go yeah. into people to get yeah. so i think it, if we do that way you know that connection that that we can have and also what is so important it's uh sometimes we don't need to talk you know what i mean we don't need a language yeah. we just can you know explain ourselves and say look <laughs> uh, you know you know just say follow me this is, you know that kind of yeah. so that also that we have that special thing that word doesn't matter so much mm. so uh I think it, that's a way to, to do it. And I, I still doing all this, try to go, you know, it's like, a, I don't know if you saw it, uh, this video with this uh, guy from South Africa, from Nigeria. It oh. was dancing in the rain. Yeah. Well, he's from Nigeria and he loved to dance and he's, you know, and it's amazing uh, how people want to do things, but, they never had the chance, you know, well, for good now, because of this, hmm. everybody knows, you know, like I was saying before, I have this, the other day, my, my foundation, I was giving a class and we have this student, he's in the middle of nowhere with this community, native community, uh, who live in Tucuman. Uh -huh. uh, he, she started learning from YouTube in the cellular phone okay and so the community the el cacique for those who doesn't know, speak spanish try to find out what is cacique okay. uh, <laughs> it took her every time 150 kilometers to tucuman capital so she can take class and back 300 kilometers wow. each day yeah. for her to take class so we know this so now the foundation help her help her sorry uh, to continue and we give, we send it uh, class sometimes already uh, in record so she can follow with the corrections and everything, you know, a little by little. And she's so talented, mm. you know, how much talent she has. And, uh, and it's only 12, 13 years old. Wow. So, it's, you know, we can gather, we, we have to if we really love what we do, you know, if we love dance and we want everybody to know and to love dance, yeah. you know, like the, this uh, cacique, we, the other day on Saturday, we, we have a little uh, conversation together before I was teaching the class and he said, look, dancing for us is our life. We are communicating, dancing. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. said to me in the past, in the beginning of the time, we're dancing to the rain, to rain, you know, we dance. <laughs> yeah. And you listen to them and I say, wow, they are more open of dancing, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. uh, and it's like, because for them it's natural. And that's the thing. We, we have to try to translate to also to the dancers mm. who really are trying to be professional, to be natural. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, what Wilha Burman teach me all the time. Oh. Ballet is natural, you know, you, you walk, you walk natural, you dance, you walk, you know, and uh, different way you walk with your heel first and ballet, you walk with your toes first, you know, just little thing, but you have to be natural. Yeah, that's the thing. If you know, it doesn't matter, whatever, all the thing you do tricks or whatever, if it's not natural. Yeah. So I think it, we have to go out. That's the only way we can have more people to understand and to love ballet and to have a new audience and to find new generations 
yeah. who really love, you know, yeah. uh, that this career. People, yeah. and their their ideas and their dreams, and and help facilitate their their passion, and uh, you know, help people that want to do something, you know, that. For me, I feel like I just want to help other people have the opportunities that I did, you know. It's about uh, just, yeah, hoping that, that other people can, can achieve what they wanted to the, the way I did. It's sort of my way of just sort of giving back, not only to, to the ballet community that I'm so proud of and, and have been a member of for so long, but, but just for other people to, to help other people have opportunities. It's... Um, that's what ballet rising is all about. And I think that's what ballet, the dance community is all about as well. I mean, there's so many supportive people and, and people that are just passionate about dance, you know, dance and expression. It's just, it's what we live for. So, yeah. Well, that's, that's what we do. And that's what I've been doing for so many years, you know, try to help, you know, my company came out about a hundred dancers from there. Uh, you know, from there was uh, Luciana Paris, Herman Cornejo, uh, Erika Cornejo, dancer who work in uh, Hamburgo Ballet, Stuttgart, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Finland, I mean, around the world. And uh, and I was so happy for me that I know that I give this opportunity when they were young to work in a company, how to work in the company, travel around the world, work with different choreographers, you know, have the experience when they are young, so they're ready. Yeah. Uh, prepare when they go to a big company and uh, and I love that I love try to you know help these people to have the possibility to make the dream because I have that possibility you know I have that chance mm. uh, of course in my time was no one to help me uh, <laughs> but uh, that doesn't matter that the next generation can pass the same way yeah. so I have that possibility to do that. That's what I'm doing. And because, okay, I'm Julio Boca. I, I, I was there and I know how hard it is, you know, to get there. Mm. Even I was very lucky, but not everybody have that luck the yeah. way I did, <laughs> the opportunity that I did. So my, my way to say thank you is, you know, give it to all these young dancers, uh, or choreographers, uh, or teachers, to, go, to have the opportunity for them to make. Mm -hmm. Of course, after that, each one is in her own, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they make their own decision, but at least I give the, the yeah. opportunity. I give the the place. Yeah, you were, I mean, you were such a trailblazer. I mean, I, it was like, when I was a kid, all the dancers, all the big famous dancers around the world that I knew of came from Russia, Europe, or the United States. And then, you know, after you, I mean, there were, there were many great dancers from South America before, but it seemed to me that, that you really opened up the floodgate. And now ballet and dance is just so international. And there's big stars now from Argentina, from Mexico, from Colombia, now, now a lot from China and Korea. It's just becoming more and more international and, and for me you were a huge trailblazer in that effort so i mean not only were you such a great dancer but you were also a a revolutionary in that way it just it really um suddenly made me realize wow there's a lot of good dancers from south america really good dancers um, well when i uh, when i went to abt there was no many spanish talking people you know it was uh, uh, I think one girl and the other one was Robert Hill, but he's American, but he's, he's, he's Spanish. Yeah. Uh, but after that, you know, before it was, of course, Fernando Bujones mm. or Alicia Alonso, but after that it was not. Yeah. And when I went there, it was a big change in that moment. Uh, not right away, but later, you know, I remember each time when someone who speaks Spanish came to try to audition to ABT, they asked me if I know them. <laughs> like I, I was supposed to know all the people who speak Spanish, the dance world, you know. That's a big and, world. Uh, <laughs> and, it, and it was like, well, uh, no, maybe, you know. Um, you know, and I remember the first time Paloma, when I was translate her, <laughs> Yeah. I was making the translations to her and I was like, 
you know, I'm not <laughs> a good translator, sorry. And, uh, but, you know, I know it's a big change. And it's like, also what I feel in that moment, I feel like it, in South America or like in Spain, because I came a lot of from Spain also, yeah. uh, Joaquin, you know, and uh, many other, uh, they say, oh, if he made it, I can make it. Yeah. You know, that was my feeling like, oh, he did it. Okay, I will try, I, I can do it. You know, and before it was, no, oh, I could never gonna make it there to ABT. I could never, you know. That, yeah, that's what I thought. So I think it, that's, that's the thing that, I was very happy and I was like, okay, good. I did something to twist. Yeah. You know, at one point it was almost 30 dancers from South America and Spain and, yeah. and ABT. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I think you know, now, not anymore, but. See you must have been, you know, because there's always been really talented dancers in South America. I mean, the talent has always been there. There's been so many good teachers, but I think seeing you subtly made people think, oh, wait a minute. I can do this. It's possible, you know, and and that's such a powerful thing to to suddenly realize that something is possible just because you've seen somebody else do it. So that was the one of the the great power, yeah. one of the great things that that you did, just really opening the doors for everyone and to say, hey, look, you know, if you work hard and you're talented, you can do this. It doesn't matter what country you're you're from or or anything like that. And I think now in the future we're gonna. We got to open up the door to to let you know Africans and and Indians and, and more people from different countries realize that they can do it too. That that it's not about your color, the color of your skin or your nationality. It's not none of that matters. It's about whether you do you love to dance. Do you want to work exactly. hard? Exactly. You can do it. Just go for it. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's 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 been it's been open already and. Uh, and I hope it continue like that. I hope it continue like that because you find amazing dancers and people around the world. Uh, you know, it's just uh, incredible. I have the chance to go around the world and when I see them, I'm like, wow, why, who? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, and you know, and for me now to see it, you know, we were not prepared to do uh, the same way uh, that we did classical as a contemporary dancer. Mm. Uh, now, you know, dancers have to be 50-50 and very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and boss, and boss style. Yeah. Uh, and I've been seeing this around and I was like, wow, what they, how they can move the body, how they can connect with it. It's amazing. It's amazing how they can do a little thing. That's why I always, how I said, to be a uh, right? Past in the beginning of an interview, oh, yeah. always try to have your own personality. That's the thing you know have to lose, absolutely, uh, because it's the only way that uh, that you will make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Julio, thank you so much. It was a real, <laughs> real pleasure to talk to you. Um, before, before, no, please. I, know, I mean, I feel like we've there's been already so much inspirational stuff to say, but. You know, is there anything you'd like to say? Um, just tell the Valley world what you think, how you feel, give them, you know, anything. Uh, no, I, I'm, the only thing I can say, thank you. Uh, thank you for the interview and thank you to everybody. I mean, uh, I'm so grateful uh, for the love and respect they give me everywhere I go in this Valley world. Uh, places there I've never been and, and, and they treat me like at I don't know how, what, uh, so nice, open and respectful. And it's so hard to, to get that, you know, and to continue to get that. And I'm, I'm really, really grateful for that. And really thank you. Because it's, when I go to different places, uh, it's, it's so hard, you know, to get that connection where you go two weeks or three weeks, you know, just stuck uh, right away. And they are also into, into know into know me and to get more for what I can say and give it them in the class and a rehearse and as as a teacher and as a coach it's the best thing can happen you know to have that mm. back and forward so that's it I mean thank you uh, thank you <laughs> and thank you all for for that uh, nice warm thing that I always receive when I 
I go everywhere. Well, great. Thank, well, you. thank you so much for everything, you know, being such an inspiration to so many people and, and, and wanting to give back to the community. That's, that's so special. So, and thanks for coming on and doing this interview. I, I really enjoyed talking to you again. It's been many years. <laughs> Um, I know many, many. <laughs> I hope to see you here in Amsterdam soon. And if not, I would love to come down to Uruguay sometime. Um, oh, come! You're gonna love it. Yeah, you're gonna love it. And the company is so good. It's very nice. I, uh, I, I did a good job. <laughs> yeah. No, myself with a team. <laughs> but uh, one of the things I'm, I'm happy that I changed uh, the culture of work of the mentality of the dancers here right. uh, because they are very young mm -hmm. and you know to go from four hours to eight hours to work to work series to do the class every time you know many different things uh, i'm happy to see now how they're they are the heart of the company you know director we can go and out teach around but the dancers are the heart to continue this so if they are not really together and enjoy it then uh, you know really make the sacrifice to work company there never will be always yeah. a good level yeah. so uh, you will enjoy here uh, also if you come more like a spring time it's much better beautiful <laughs> beaches <laughs> a lot of parties <laughs> bueno. <laughs> good wine good good wine good meat Practicar mi, mi español. Ah, exacto. <laughs> Perfecto. Great. Julio, thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. No, please. Thank you and say hi to everybody there. Okay. Chama. Thank you. A big hug. Big kiss. Bye-bye.